In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I groomed this dog from Blender Studios from the short animation Spring. I downloaded him from the Blender website. He's a free asset. In his file, I found out that his groom was done in this geo. So I just deleted the particle hairs and did a hair nodes groom from scratch. In the head and the mustache, I did it symmetrically. And I did other hair curve objects just to break the symmetry, as you can see here. And to do this is really simple. You just groom your guide symmetrically and leave a little space in the middle. So you do the asymmetrical in another curve object. And in the generation, you before you interpolate them, you just import the asymmetrical guides and go on from there. For the density maps, I used Blender Texture Paint because I thought like, oh, we can rely on UV coordinates to generate the hairs. But when I generated the hairs, I found out that they go like vertex colors. So they are assigned to the points of the mesh. But they were still useful because I painted the legs and head map. And then I just inverted them and multiplied to generate the body one. And then I have a no hair map that I multiply just to be sure that we don't have hair where it's not supposed to have any type of hair. For the modifiers, I just followed the Simon tutorial on hair nodes because I didn't know how to to get the attributes from the curves, how to randomize values on noise and clumps and all that. And I just followed his tutorial and, and copied in which one of the, of the grooms to get different variations in clumps and noise and all that. For rendering, I just did what we usually do in Houdini. I just made a new object, hair object, imported every groom inside then just set the material and that's it and i like this approach because i can paint a linked map a width of map to get a gradient so the hairs get thinner here and i can just plug it here because everyone's together and it's like in a region so i can control everyone together after they are all groomed like a general body workflow and for the shader, I just use the shader that came in the file. It, it looks good just because of this shader, because the, this was a really quick room. So let's talk about some useful tips. Let's say you have a top groom and a bottom groom in the same character. He's a large character and you, you want to split it. So you do your guides in one object and the other guys on another. Then you create a third object and merge them. You just drag and drop here. And then you join Geo and you interpolate your hairs from these guys. From here, you can just paint a mask like this one. I painted it here just to demonstrate and drive your modifiers from the mask. And depending on the complexity of the character, this is faster. You just paint mask. You know, he has a uh, big clumps in here or more clumps over there. And you just go painting and you do the guide separately and just merge and separately them. Another way of doing it is you do your guides and then you interpolate and do your modifiers in a, one object. And then you do the other. Then you create a third one and import everyone and use the blend hair curves. See? In this case, I painted a map only to affect this region. If I take off the mask, you will see that it will affect everyone. So come up here and only affects where I painted the mask. If you want to see the mask, how it looks like, it looks like this. It's just a, a line here. And you must be asking, oh, why not to use the texture paint? I, I did it in the dog, but I, I regret it. 
because I, I wasn't able to do some effects to make it more refined and I ran out of time. So here I painted a width test. Here. As you can see, we have like a big chunk and some really small lines here. And then let's say this was your low poly. This is a high poly one. That's why it looks good. But if it's a low poly, it will be all messed up. And also, when we plug into this node to set the width, if, it just doesn't work. I don't know why, but it just doesn't work. So, but there is a workaround for that. That it's really clever where you can keep your low poly and still have high resolution painting. And it's a thing we usually do in Houdini. So we have our low poly and we duplicate it here. And let's create our high poly. So let's hide the low, subdivide this three times. We apply it, we have nice dense geo. We paint here. Let's call this density. And then I'm going to copy this vertex group and call it with it. Now I will smooth weights. And let's do a hundred times. So it's really aggressive. So now we have these two attributes. There you go. So on the high poly, you're going to add your fur or empty curves, whatever. I'm just going to disable all the modifiers here. And there it is. So on the interpolate, I'm going to move to nodes. So we can dive into genodes. And I will take a named attribute and grab our density and plug it into the mask. And here, as you can see, all working good. To check it, let's get the profile node, set curve profile, plug this in. Duplicate this attribute, grab the width of, connect this to the stream, and take a nice width if that we like. I like this one. So then we set a math node and we set it to multiply. Then we plug our width if, copy this, paste here to be the same value. Oh, it doesn't work because of the M. There is. I plug into the radius. And everyone might go, oh my god, what's going on? Yes, let's paint it black. And then we can tweak this value. And as you can see, we have a gradient. So if you're doing a head, and this is like the forehead and the scalp, and the, ha the hairs close to the end of, of the hairline, they are thinner, you can do it. But you must be asking, Lucas, this is a high poly mesh. I want to, I want my low poly. And yes, I got you covered. What you're going to do is hide your high poly and show it here. Then you go to your low poly and add an empty hair. Have to deform there. Good. Let's just add a, a G node here. No. Then you just take the big one here, drag, and feed into the stream. And then it moves together with it. And just to be sure, let's make a shape key because you want to animate your character, right? And voila, you weight painted in your high poly. And you can drive it with your low poly. 
and then you can just subdivide it to this same amount as the high poly for render time so you can turn it off and check your fur and another tip is when you are on your high poly and you are painting here it can be sluggish that's why I have this monitor on here in Blender because this will deload stuff from memory so you just deload your hair and when you go to weight painting it will go smooth like butter and then you just slow the hair back in you can check it out go into your attributes uh, oh I painted the width paint the density here here's not so real time but there it is oh. fast you paint you turn it on you check how it's going and you must be asking yourself why does this work and our groom doesn't break well basically it works because it's the same mesh just subdivided our uv coordinates are the same take a look here it's the same uv coordinates if for some reason we come up in our low poly here and we do a smart uv project that will break uvs now it's gone it's still attached but the coordinates are messed up so always remember when you are grooming to have uv maps and a good uv map a good uv map is your best friend and there you have it everyone don't try to use the blur attribute node between your attribute painter or texture and your width or density whatever it's not working i don't know why and the blender hair grooming future looks bright congrats to the team i hope to see new updates i'm, I'm going to read the the dev blog now to see what people are suggesting what are the discussions maybe they didn't find something that i found here and yes if you have any questions leave a comment leave a like if you like subscribe if you want more i post when whenever i can <laughs> have a nice day bye